Hello and welcome to the MBC Reviews. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. I am head of the Sapphire Shores fan club and slash fiction collection. Okay, so now I understand why she became unpopular. Yeah. Ah. And also joining us today is Sapphire Heart Song. I am apparently a pony puppy. What? I don't know. I, I, I don't know. But anywho, in today's review, we are going to review Friends Forever issue 37, Patreon sponsored by Master of Lag. And in this issue, Rarity is forced to work together with the great and powerful Trixie to make Sapphire Shores next concert a success. Will they iron things out? Will they succeed? Will they fail? Find out next in... Uh, what did they say? Dragon Ball? Goku's Revenge? Drag- Find out next in Dragon Ball Z. Yes, but anywho, first impressions, first impressions. Silver, what do you think, man? Well, this is a mixed bag for me. In some ways, it's a follow-up to my favorite of the uh, Friends Forever, which I believe was number 16, the Rarity and Babs comic. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But Rarity and Trixie is a more awkward dynamic, mostly because all the issue lies on Rarity's side. And (laughs) it's funny, there's one reference to the fact that Trixie saved Rarity's life, or at least helped save the day. But the artwork in the panel was so awkward for me that i was so distracted by it i never even spotted it on the first three read-throughs what, what like in the comic really yeah where like okay point out out man like because i read this one true but i didn't see what you're talking about oh good i'm not alone then well we'll we'll get there we'll get there in due time but it was kind of ho-hum even in the art style i felt like it was struggling with the color choices the conflict is all on rarity The only real shine I see, the only um, bright spot, is Sapphire Shores. Damn straight there, boy! Every time I see this pony, I I think more highly of her. (laughs) More and more. So uh, I'm glad for her role in this, but this is supposed to be Rarity and Trixie's issue. So I'm afraid this kind of fell on his face for me. Really, no. Because I don't see see that like I, I think that the comic shines through near the end with how Trixie and Rarity work together and stuff but eh, that's your thought for now uh Seppi what about you I enjoyed this comic but I do agree with Silver I did take issue with Rarity at least like up until the end where it's I won't get into spoiler territory and whatnot but uh we'll talk about it when we get there but yeah I actually like Trixie more than Rarity in this comic. And Rarity's my favorite pony, so this says a lot. <laughs> like, Trixie is just trying. She's trying not to be a screw-up and trying to comply with everyone and trying to be a good pony. But it's in the end, she just can't because she's a screw-up. And it's just, I, I want to hug the poor Trixie. <laughs> she tried so hard, only to fall so hard. <laughs> and she needs a hug. Yeah, yeah. And as for me, um, this comic was a fun read. I do like the whole awkward pair. Like, you will never see in the series where Trixie and Rarity working together. Those pairings are strange. And like I mentioned way back when, when I was talking to um, Heather Breckel about the Friends Forever issues, it's one of those comics where, hey, you could pair anyone and the writers could make it work. That'll be fun. Oh, another thing I forgot to mention, though, with Mm -hmm. the art. And Silver also briefly mentioned it with the coloring. I personally prefer Agnes Garboska's older look, where she goes for more of a color style, like a watercolor type of style. Because I remember when, you know, the Spike and Zakora uh, Friends Forever. Mm -hmm. Well, I looked into this and I missed that watercolor art style, you know? It's funny, I actually like this more animated style because the watercolor was beautiful, but oftentimes things tended to blend together and you lost a sense of depth. Mm -hmm. And I am 50-50 on the art because for me, coloring is done by Henry, if I'm not mistaken or not, but let's put that aside uh, for now. Heather Breckel did the coloring for this, but in a way, I feel like it doesn't suit the art style. I don't know. It feels too flat for me. 
I don't know about that one. Like, I'm going to put that aside. But okay. Um, what I was saying, um, yes, you could go on forever. But since uh, 38 is going to be the last, so it ain't going to be forever. No problem, no problem. So I do like the pairing for this one. It's an odd couple kind of dynamic. But the story here is that Rarity is in the wrong. Like Seppi said, Trixie here is trying her best to not screw up. But nobody's giving her the chance, including Rarity. Even though there's a big foreshadowing that Sweetie Belle mentioned that we will talk about when we review it. And I just don't know. And if I want to go into the art style, I find this one a bit strange. Like, how do I put this? It comes to the point where I'm almost comparing it to Jay Fosgate's style. Oh. Yeah, now. I did mention, like, the first thing that put me off at first was like a bit of the preview of the art that you see like when you first entered the comic and looking mm. at like sapphire shore's neck and it just doesn't look good yeah and it's just the thing i, I remember liking agnes's work but somehow in this issue it i hate to use the word rush but it felt rush at the same time too most of the ponies here do the things that Fosgate likes to do. Ponies in human poses. I feel like it works more with Trixie because she's been shown more to uh, stand up on her hind feet. If that makes true, sense. True, but at the same time too, like in page one, the conductor is in a very awkward pose falling down. Um, he's carrying bags on his... Well, he's carrying... Like, like, like I mentioned before, like... It struck me the wrong chord where I felt like, hey, is this time I Fosgate or something like that? But no, no, no. So probably that's just me and my acute that sense and the of style. proportions look a bit off on certain points. Yeah, but anywho, but anywho, that's our first impressions and whatnot. So if you guys have not read this comic, I say pause here and go read it. Welcome back. So anywho, let's start off with our main heroes. The Bell Sisters heading to Manhattan. And Rarity here has a job to do because Sapphire Heart, Sapphire Shores is hiring her for costume design. And Sweetie Belle is going to meet Babs. In, yeah, we're going to meet Babs for the second time in a long time now. And the first thing they do when they see each other is that they check out each other's posteriors. Mm -hmm. All right, move along. Nothing to see here. Just two fillies. <laughs> given the shipper's dreams oh yeah and like you mentioned before a good call back to the friends forever 16 was it yes yeah but that Where was that was before babs got her uh cutie mark yes yeah and uh rarity saying hello and whatnot and yeah the they have a weekend so sweetie bell and babs are going to hang out while rarity does work going to Madison Mayor Gardens, <laughs> uh, the place where Sapphire sure will be performing. Rarity is greeted to chaos when she enters the building. What? Ah, uh, chaos. Where's Discord? Probably in the background laughing at the chaos that he did not do. Taking a vacation. Tee -hee, tee -hee, tee -hee. So, what happened here? What happened here? Sapphire <laughs> hearts. Oh god, I'm so confused with this one. Shit. Uh, <laughs> Way to go, Sapphire. Your word choice is driving him absolutely bonkers. Good. Uh, but anywho... Who knows? Maybe I'm the cause of the chaos. <laughs> cha -cha -cha -cha. Uh, but anywho, Sapphire here um, wanted to do a concert. And the venue, the original venue was not that big. It was kind of a small venue and it sold out. Her manager managed to get a much bigger and better place, which is the Medicine Mare Gardens. And the Madison Mary Gardens here is a place of what you call this greatness and whatnot. And if you flub, everybody's going to hear about it. So, yeah, no pressure there. No pressure whatsoever. And with the last minute changes, the original concept for the stage show was not going to fit in with the stage of the Madison Mary Gardens. So, they had to hire. Last minute backup dancers, stage hands, and costume design, and so on. So everything has to be escalated 
to let's just say that push up to 11 and they're not ready for it so rarity here has to push her designs and so on quick question who let the number one fan stalker into the production see that's how terrible everything is <laughs> uh, but anywho continuing on sapphire says that rarity you need to bring your game up to 11 and i also hired a pyrotechnics expert to help you with that department and Rarity here first says that, hey, I'm excited to work with this person until she discovers it's Trixie. Yes, Trixie. It was eating all the sandwiches. Yes. Who could blame her? They're probably friggin' delicious and Indeed. made with caviar. <laughs> and with that, Rarity says, nope, I will not work with that hussy. She hussy. Is, <laughs> she Since is... when is Trixie a hussy? I don't know, I'm just saying words. But anywho, Rarity says all the bad things that Trixie has done, like how she humiliated her in public, and how she trapped everyone in a big giant glass dome in Ponyville. And Trixie owns up to this fact, and she's changing. And she even saved Equestria, so doesn't that count for something? Well, here's the thing. Two, two things in this part. One, actually three things. One... Look at the backgrounds in all these panels. The The violet background is going to be predominant throughout the rest of this comic. It tends to swallow up a lot of Rarity's details. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it, it, it's not a great color mix in my eyes. Secondly, when Trixie says that's not me anymore, she's trying to hold her hat over her heart. But it's a little low and starts to look kind of Freudian. <laughs> oh my god, no. Yep. Yes. Yep. And... And three, Norman, you were asking about the panel where Trixie says, I helped save the day, but the art was so awkward that it completely distracted me on three read-throughs. Okay, well, which one was that? It's the first panel on the page after Trixie says, that's not me anymore, with her hat okay. in the wrong... Her hat really is in the wrong place. Her uh, head looks bigger than Sapphire Shores 1. Yeah. So wait, this is the one that you mentioned, Silver? Like, uh, yeah. I... Meet friends with Starlight Glimmer and even help save. So this is the like, hey, that, that is the how only, does that not distract you, Norman? That is the only reference she makes to towards to where and back again. Yeah, I know. Like I, I, I even had to go check the calendar dates to make sure that the timing was right. And yes, it was right. Still, the Holy Mother. Just that panel alone is very awkward and not right. Yeah, that I mentioned before, like, reading this part here, I had to stop, go to the wiki, and double-check the dates. And also, I had to think about, hey... Did... No, I'm talking about the art. Oh, not yeah, the I'm... detail that they mention. Yeah, and here's the thing, like, I had to stop for a bit and think about, did Jay Fosgate do this? Nah, Jay Fosgate's art style is a bit different than this. And I was tempted to go look back at Agnes's work. I doubt it's like this. Like, this is kind of a rush job. In terms of art style, like, oh man. But anywho, but anywho. Rarity says she'll give Trixie a chance. And Sapphire sure says, okay, do your best. Like, I'm hoping for the best because if not, you guys are going to get it. Yeah, you guys are going to get it. And with that, Trixie tries to help Rarity. And Rarity brushes her off. Not giving a chance to share some ideas or input. And I can see why you guys here don't like this. I'm in the same boat too. Like, if you're supposed to work together, work together. Don't do this. But no, we, we, we get this. So, can't do much. Still though, you gotta admit though, throughout this comic, or at least during this part, Rarity's kind of a snooty little... Oh my. I am my. Well, Rarity's well, always she been... is. She's always been a little snooty in just the right ways, but... Yeah, but this is just being a straight up... Uh... Is that Jackie from that seventy show? Uh, oh yeah, I remember one awkward thing about when this this comic Rarity came out. Rarity standing at the door. Rarity standing at the door. Oh yes, where yeah, she's a uh, yeah. That's a very different pose for her. But it's when Sapphire, basically, when the, her dress accidentally gets lit on fire. Oh yeah. And this reminded me of poor Michael Jackson. Oh, for those who don't know. Michael Jackson was doing a performance once, and the lights were so intense that they lit his hair, 
gel or spray on fire wow. and burn, burned his head. That led to him getting addicted to painkillers, which was part of his unfortunate death. And so seeing this, it conjured sort of an awkward memory. This I did not know. So really, that's something outside this comic for which I can't truly fault it. But the association is there. Yeah, and in all honesty, that did not hit me until you mentioned it. But still, I don't blame the writers for doing this because you have fireworks. So, yeah. you Because put... baby, you're a firework. Something, no. something, firework. Yeah, I am quoting you, Gyo. Oh, anywho. God. Friggin' Yu Gi Oh! Season Zero. Abridgement. But, anywho, but, anywho. After Trixie and Rarity finish their work, uh, Sapphire here goes up on stage to do a dress rehearsal. And yeah, everything seems fine until the fire on the dress. One of Trixie's um, flames uh, or sparks accidentally lit Sapphire's dress on fire. So yeah, uh, Trixie here is being chewed out by Sapphire and Sapphire here is almost to the point where she wants to fire Trixie. But Rarity says, no, you should give her a chance because I didn't really do so and technically it's both our fault. And the both of them here are working together, solving the problems. Even though Rarity was being a passive-aggressive little... How so? She she just, I don't know, her attitude comes off as completely passive-aggressive, like, during the, uh, you know, like, while they were forced to work together and whatnot. Rarity's oh, like... Oh, yeah. No. Rarity. Yeah, Rarity, Rarity. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, Rarity. Uh, but still, Rarity here says she's sorry for being a mini mini pants, and they work together to solve the problem, and yeah, they did great. And here's the problem with the issue in this one. It's a forced conflict that could have been easily solved if Rarity was the bigger pony. I think somewhere along the line they say that they're both incredibly stubborn ponies, and that's supposed to be their connecting bond. I, I don't see it. Probably that's the connection there but i don't see it because from what i can tell rarity here is just not giving trixie the time of day and trixie at the same time too if okay let's find faults for both of them uh trixie here is trying her best to work together with rarity but she's being a very annoying uh was aggressive the... little mm, i don't know the... what does dwk always mention about Ra uh, trixie uh, drinking and uh, when the wagons are rocking, yeah, 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 something like that. But, <laughs> yeah. but anywho, but anywho, Trixie here is at fault too. But she's trying her best. She's trying her best. But Rarity is not giving her the time of day and so on. But in the end, everything works out. Everything is a success. And Sapphire Shores concert is the bomb. But after this concert here, we won't be seeing her anymore. You want to know why? Because now they've got, uh, oh, Songbird Serenade. Yeah, you got see a pony. <laughs> how how fickle is the public? I first, know. first there's Countess Co Coca Cabana, and now <laughs> Sapphire Heart Song. Yeah. Oh wait, now I, now I'm doing it too. <laughs> <laughs> that means I'm the star of the show now. Yeah. There you go. But uh -huh. let's uh, let's actually talk about Sapphire Shores real quick. I mm -hmm. I did love her presentation in this because she has every right to be angry, and she's when she says, "I'm starting to think I should fire you both." It's like, yeah, that that's hard to hear, but honestly, fair. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, Rarity screwed up, Trixie sc unintentionally screwed up. Technically, you would be well within your rights to fire both. True, true. But since she doesn't have the time, she won't. Because if she does, then who's going to do the stuff that she needs? Costume, uh, light show, and whatnot. So, yeah, she can't afford to fire them. And not yeah. the whatnot. But here's yeah. the thing. Sapphire has been in command of this entire performance start to finish. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When I <laughs> Here's a real-life example. When Britney Spears at the height of her fame, came to Colorado. She couldn't get her stage to fit 
uh, on the venue. And so she canceled the show altogether. Disappointed tons of fans. And I thought, what a, what a stuck up little so-and-so. Now here's Sapphire. She's now redoing her whole show and taking point on, on everything. She's helping train everyone. She's coordinating efforts. This kind of autonomy and drive is something I wouldn't expect from a real-life pop star. But here's Sapphire Shores just owning everything and being, I think, very practical. Oh, yeah. And Sapphire's character here is awesome. Like, I do love her characteristic here because she's willing to give Trixie the chance to prove herself. Because do you agree with me when I say that Trixie is a really good stage magician? Yes. I'm mixed. It depends on what trick she's doing. Uh, let's just say fireworks and whatnot. Do you think she'll do great? Yes. All right. So this is meant for her. This is her job here. And Sapphire here is taking the chance on her because of the potential that it will bring. Because I think if uh, Fizzle Potberry Twist is here, she'll hire her on the spot. Yeah, if only you guys would say those nice things about me. <laughs> <laughs> Oi. But still, um, I do like Sapphire here for... <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I do like Sapphire here for giving the chance on Trixie and saying that you should just work together. Like, you guys are great. I trust in you both. Do a good job. But Rarity here is like what Sappy said. is playing hardball and nah. She doesn't want to, and so on. And because of that, Sapphire here suffers. We have now at least three pony pop stars. Mm-hmm. Who's who's your faves? Sapphire Shores has always been my fave. Oh, okay. Rara's on me. Like, I highly enjoy Rara. What about you, Silva? It's a hard competition because I really do enjoy Sapphire and the various roles she's had. But Countess Color a Turtle really is... Uh, <laughs> Really did wow in that first episode, but I'll put her in second just because she hasn't had a lot of as much screen time as uh, Sapphire Shores. But at the same time, too, uh, Sapphire, <laughs> Sapphire, yeah, yeah, I win. <laughs> Sapphire yes. Shores didn't do any singing, so like, eh? well, that that's the hard part. We haven't actually got to see Sapphire Shores' actual <laughs> performance, Mm-mm. though we did get to see her practice in a leotard, and that gave rise to uh-huh. so much humor. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, and then there's Songbird Serenade, who's like, I can't trust a character who doesn't have eyes. <laughs> In all honesty, I don't count her because that's just Hasbro way of pulling or attracting the non brony demographic to the characters just to get in seats and whatnot. Well, either way, I still think Sapphire comes out as the eight number one pony of pop, despite what the Yay! fickle fans of Equestria say. Yeah, yeah. For, for me, like I mentioned before, I like Rara much better because of her initial song before she became Rara again and after because the pop song medley, oh, what was that song? I forgot, but it was really good. I do like how the stage production was done. Okay, it's not fair because we haven't seen Seppi done anything. So it's not fair. Oh, not fair. oh see, see now, now the names are backfiring. <laughs> <laughs> but anywho, uh, getting back on track, uh, the show is a success, and Sapphire thanks Rarity and Trixie for their awesome job. And Rarity heads back to the train station, picking up Sweetie Belle, who has an awesome mohawk, <laughs> looking like one of her roller, one of Babs's roller derby idols. Um. <laughs> um. Yes. Um. Just uh. um. Yeah, sometimes that's all you can say. Yeah. And with that, episode ends. So, we we talk a lot about this one. We had a lot of opinions to put on this one. And yeah, this comic is a fun read. If you guys don't mind humoring me on this, um, what do you guys think of the story writing and whatnot? Is it okay? It, does it... How does it feel for you guys? It's a bit cliche. It's like, there's not really much say on it. I feel like I've seen this story before. I just get layer on top of my head. To me, I felt that it could have been done better because the writing here, okay, expectations and whatnot, I have dulled them down because I'm reading a pony comic. Not because it's terrible, because I know what to expect after reading 
36 of these comics. So I know what to expect. Oh, I've tempered my expectations a bit. I felt like this one could have been better. I'm inclined to agree. I, I, I didn't really yeah. enjoy the story because it's basically entirely based on Rarity being the unreasonable one. And Friends Forever works best when it's it's showing both characters in their strengths and weaknesses all together. What we, what we have here is simply Rarity's weakness, her pride, and that's meant to carry the entire conflict. And as such, I find it's just not as enjoyable a story. Like I say, mostly the preponderance of purple really takes away visually from the story. And so I don't think I enjoyed it as much as you guys. I think I... Given the choice, I'd give this one a pass. Mm, all right, you know. Uh, yeah, I can see that. I mean, there are a few elements that I enjoyed, but other than that, yeah. I mean, I just read the comic this morning. <laughs> I just read it today, too. And I do enjoy this comic, but I don't know. Like, it felt like it could have been done better. And if I were to repeat myself for the past few comics it's going to be the same uh, whole thing again like oh it could have been done better it could have been done better blah 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 and so on but the story aside it was okay could have been better but it's okay the arts what do you guys think because to me the art for this one is not that great no the art is terrible <laughs> I wouldn't say terrible there are, there are certain panels in particular where proportions are off and sometimes okay, so there are a lot of things that could be improved upon. How about that? Yeah, yeah. but there there are the others things. that look just fine. I mean, I like that ending, Sweetie Mohawk. <laughs> yeah, but here's the thing, Sweetie Hawk. We're, we're talking about Agnes here, and from what I've seen, Agnes here does some good works. Like I don't know why, I don't know how, but this art specifically, like this art here, just bothers me. Like I don't know why, but. This issue well, the here... proportions are off. The coloring is flat, like not in the good way. Like you can do flat coloring and still do a good job, but in this case, it's not well done. And there are a lot of awkward poses, especially when it takes a book or it takes a chapter off of uh, who? What's his name? Jay Foskett, where they tried to do the human poses but it doesn't work in their case yeah and here's the thing um we recently reviewed issue 34 and that one was done by her too and if i remember right i had a lot of fun with that one to each their own well so every every artist has an off day yeah and i'm guessing this is one of her off days then because ugh, I, I don't know what to say man i really don't know what to say well, I, has it rough. They have it rough, all right. What can I say? This is the penultimate issue of Friends Forever, and thankfully we have another issue coming up that I think we'll find more enjoyable. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, that one. Uh that one. Uh, gonna enjoy that one highly. But anywho, um, what can we say about this one? Um, we we gave our thoughts on the arts and writing, and yeah. So, final thoughts, final thoughts. Silva? This wasn't the final thoughts? Yeah, I thought this was our final thoughts, but, you know, it, it's not a story I enjoy, but it does reinforce my appreciation for Sapphire Shores and how she is not nearly so petty or selfish as the pop stars that I come to view in our modern culture. Oh, yeah. Hmm. All right, all right. And Seppi? Same as him, just to shorten it down. All righty then, all righty then. And as for me, I enjoy this comic. Wouldn't recommend it. I say if you want to read it, go buy the omnibus in a set so you still have other good comics within it. If you don't mind the art, like, I don't know why, but in all honesty, Agnes's work is not this bad. Like, if I remember right, some of her works are pretty awesome. I guess, like Silver said, this is one of her off days. Can't be helped. So, Silver, um, what do we have planned for next week? Well, it's back to the Changeling Kingdom for us, as we discover the most awesome of all Changelings, Pharynx, brother of Thorax. And so we will be uh, reviewing To Change a Changeling, starring, of all things, the great and powerful Trixie and Starlight Glimmer. 
Yay! Yay! Much funds will be had. And we will discover Sapphire Heartsong's secret ship. Ooh, my. What ship? Well, we'll find out. I don't have any ships. Yes, what, you, you mean do. Starlight and Trixie? That I ship? <laughs> oh, no, no. You folks don't know this, but while we were talking about Young Episode... No! Safi... No, I made a mistake. <laughs> I'm sorry! Silva, 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 you don't have to explain it because that will be an exclusive to the Patreons because oh. if you are a Patreon supporter, you'll get to listen to what Sappy said. <laughs> They're exploiting me for money. Don't listen to them. <laughs> oh, that's the name of the business. Sorry? <laughs> so, anywho, yeah. Oh, talking about the Patreons, if you would like to listen to what Sappy said, you can do so at patreon.com. Or coffee.com with every support, you'll get early access to the review and discussion podcast exclusive, like what Seppi just said, and deleted contents, like Seppi said. I hate you people. <laughs> and a huge thank you from me. Talking about the thank yous, I'd like to thank Lurka, Catelyn, Dracatoria, Starstream, myself, like Amy, Mark, and also Charles. Thank you so much, guys, for the awesome support. So, anywho, um. <laughs> I demand half of your patronage <laughs> next month because of this Norman. Nope. But anyway. If you're going to exploit me for money, I may as well get some. <laughs> anywho, I'm Norman Sonso. I'm Zisilva Quill, and just because of name similarity, I will now ship Sapphire Shores with Sapphire Heart Song. Ooh, and I'm out. pissed because I'm not getting any money for exploitation. <laughs> yes, Sapsploitation. <laughs> We'll see you guys next week with another fun review. See ya. I ship it. I'm salty. <laughs> <laughs>